Hey, hello everyone, and um, I once again am trying to share to uh, a fellow American Southern boy, grew up in Oklahoma, uh, Brian, with a foreigner farmer in the Philippines. I'm wanting to try to help him again here, so this video is for everyone because you can all learn from it, but at the same time, I'm trying to uh, send him information down to another part of the country too that maybe will help him out on his situation down there. So, uh, Brian, Marisol, everybody down there, I hope you're doing well. And I hope this video here will benefit everybody that, especially foreigners trying to deal with uh, understanding these bancas, these uh, pump boats, as they call them here in the Philippines. Okay, so here we are. This is a 16 horsepower on Leo Fricks. Last video. I showed you Crystal Gale, this time Leo Fricks, 16 horse like you have, and like I say, the nylons always split in these gas tanks, I mean diesel tanks, and uh, you can replace them, and replace them, and price them, and replace them, and replace them, and you'll finally give in, and you'll do it their way. Alright, so let's stick with what the problem is you're having right now. problem you're having, you can't get your motor to start. Take it loose right here. Take this cross joint loose, okay? Get it off the shaft of the engine. Don't disconnect it here. Disconnect it here because we don't want this cross joint just flopping. And uh, if the engine starts just fine with that loose, this is what it is. You changed this shaft right here. You had your guys to change the shaft and y'all upsized to a three quarter inch. And you changed this brass tube as well okay now if they did not line that up just right to where when it meets this engine up here if that angle is off here side to side even a little bit or if the angle is too much down here even just a little bit even though you think this joint can really flex a lot it can't it causes a binding and uh, makes the motor really tight it don't want to turn and it's hard to start it so that's one thing so I know that you sent out and Tai Tai sent out and changed that bottom plate or readjusted or something that the engine mounts on um, if if it was not set for this size engine to start with y'all had that smaller gas motor and that level is wrong up and down even though, yes, the cross joint can flex, if these angles are not just perfect, it binds up, it will bind up. Now, here's the next thing. I'm repeating there because I'm really trying to make you understand that. Next thing, that brass tube right there, when they're mounting it in, it too can get flexed somewhere because it's not that rigid. And uh, so somewhere as it's passing through this boat, out the back and then they strapped it up here in the front or something if they put even the most slight of a curve a super slight of a curve that shaft will bind inside that tube and rub it don't matter if it has grease in it or not and it'll rub and it will hold that shaft just like a brake pad on a rotor and uh, it don't want to start once again so you have an alignment issue. I'll show you one more thing over on Crystal Gale. So let's walk over here to Crystal Gale. And I'm going to show you another thing on that shaft that could be a problem. And you're not the only one to experience this. How I know this is I experienced it myself. I had some guys to do some work. And uh, I experienced the same problem. The boat didn't have no power and uh it was hard to start and they said oh it's blowing a lot of black smoke all this stuff and it's all because of shaft alignment issues i talked to other boat owners builders and i gained a lot of information so let me get down inside in here and i'll show you something else now what we're going to talk about right now is that carrier bearing right there um, some of them won't put a carrier bearing on there they will just strap that shaft down. Uh, see, here's that brass sleeve right here. Some of them will just try to strap it down and uh, 
not put anything to carry that load you know on the hold back from where that's coming from that cross joint there now this is directly on that three quarter inch shaft you might need to put also if once they do get the alignment correct if you don't have it already you're gonna to need to go back over the same place you bought the cross joint and they'll have that carrier bearing right there too and uh, put that on it's got a grease cert you can grease it ever so often and leave it real greasy on the outside like we had don't try to make it pretty leave that thing dirty and greasy because grease means no rust so I hope that helps you out but I'm telling you right now your shaft that that brass tube that sleeve passing through this boat is not lined up correctly that the pitch the angle and it could also have a curve a bow in it the slightest the slightest will do it and it will hold that engine tight so what I did is uh, instead of letting these boys do it themselves here um, kind of like you're letting your guys right there do it themselves um, I asked around through the community and found down a ways a gentleman that's been a long time uh, boat man here uh, working on them building them and he came here to my place he pulled that sleeve back out he found exactly he knew exactly it's his profession how to properly align that that sleeve up he got epoxied in the place he got it locked in the place and uh, he also realigned the engine and fixed that mount to where the engine wasn't in a bind with that shaft and man that boat ran like a total different machine and another thing is if you force it to run with that shaft not aligned properly it will wear through that tube it'll get hot and it'll have friction even with grease and it'll wear a hole through the side of that tube through that brass tube all right so that right there i hope this video is out there and it helps somebody else that size they want to own a pump boat here in the philippines and brian i hope it helps you all down there too i appreciate the uh reply back let me know if you saw the video and the acknowledgement there in your current video and once again i hope this helps you out uh, brian i will email you my personal cell phone number so we don't have to do video tag on all this although everybody gets to learn i guess that's part of our channels right everybody gets to learn so they learn through us and if you do have a question and i can help you you're welcome to contact me directly. Mel and I like to come visit you guys anyway. So when I was recording it out there just then and I was showing that carrier bearing like right there, you know, like on that block, that block bearing or whatever name you want to call it. Um, let me tell you another important thing about that particular bearing. Um, these engines were not meant to have a thrust pushing on that shaft. So all of the movement moving forward in those pump boats with those engines, you know, all of that, that force is pushing right through that crankshaft and against those bearings in that engine. And they do not have a uh, thrust type bearing built in those motors like an outboard engine does. An outboard engine has a, a tapered bearing and a roller bearing and it's like say tapered there and all the gears too tapered to deal with that and they'll have like thrust washers things like that inside so these motors don't have that and um, what happens is is that if they don't put that block that shaft also when you're using the boat day in day out especially if you put heavy loads on it and it's got a harder force it's got to push that boat through the water it will eventually tear those bearings up on that crankshaft and on uh, the side there's a, th a thin thrust washer in there and it'll eat them out they're a roller bearing inside there if you don't know I'll tell you that crankshafts on roller bearings and they're pretty good bearings it's pretty impressive it's not just like 
an old Briggs engine, you know, uh, aluminum to steel or whatever. And um, it, it'll knock them out. It, it just cannot handle that thrust push on it. So that block also helps out on that as well. It's got a place that will pin down onto that um, three quarter inch and, and it'll help hold it. So um, probably really wanna make sure you have that and you'll have to replace it ever so often because it'll become the wear point that's taking all of that load. So that's the next thing is that when you do put that cross bearing on there, um, it needs to be mounted to something solid across inside that boat. From one side to the other in that boat, it needs to be as solid as your engine mount because now that's going to be the new place that all of that forward thrust is going to transfer from your shaft into your boat to carry you forward. So it can't be something just flimsy to mount that that uh, carrier bearing too right there it's got to be something really solid that can endure all of the forces of moving that boat forward right there those two mounting bolts are going to have to be in some really strong wood uh, and they're going to have to be pretty good size and epoxied in there real well too all right well i just want to throw that in this clip and i will get on out of here